Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is July 6, 2016, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, a month ago, Snowden contrasted his exile as a whistleblower to Hillary breaking classification rules for personal benefit and being rewarded with the presidency. Yesterday, his response to the FBI's get out of jail free card for Hillary was amusement at the irony. Then, we show you the man Comey did indict over a 21 word email 13 years ago urging someone to preserve subpoenaed records. I'm sure, unlike Hillary, his intent was evil. And, in case you forgot just how severe the double standard of American law is, this man was shot to death, not for selling state secrets for tens of millions of dollars, or for endangering lives with security leaks like Hillary, but for selling CDs in front of a convenience store. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. Joe Biggs here with InfoWars.com. Now, we just arrived in McAllen, Texas a few hours ago. Now, what we did is we decided to go straight down to the border and see what we could do, see what we could find, because we already know that there is such a porous border here in southern Texas. We brought a couple trail cameras. We got those set up. And as we were pulling into our location to go film, we actually ended up seeing within minutes a family who had just come across the border, and we had an opportunity to talk to them. Hablan español. Son de México. ¿Qué hacen? ¿Dónde vienen? Específicamente. No son, no somos de la aduana. Nada más somos reporteros. No se preocupen. Nosotros somos hondureños. Hondureños. Sí. ¿Y qué hacen? News or journalists. Ah, sí. I already told oh, them. Okay. Yes, and they are from Honduras. From Honduras. Mm -hmm. How long have you been traveling? ¿Cuánto tiempo llevan viajando? Ah, tengo un mes de ni caminando. Un mes. Sí. A month. Pasado ya queremos agua y tal. They've been traveling for a month now. When yeah. did they get into the U.S.? When they arrived in the United States. They just crossed. Sí, they just crossed. By a, a raft or a boat? Or? Se cruzaron solos o cruzaron con alguien. Solos. Eh, caminando. O de que en barco. En, no? Pero están bien todos? <laughs> okay. They're all safe. They just walked across. Walked well, across. Yeah, they so where are they no trying boat. to go to? Where are they trying to go to? In Houston. Ah, so they need a lot. Seems like the popular spot, huh? Yeah. They have family in Houston. Okay. Did they pay anybody to help them get up over to the border? Are they asking if they paid someone to help them? No. To cross? Solo. Solo. By themselves. Okay. Did, uh, through Mexico, a bus or train or? Como? How do they travel how across did, Mexico? Yeah. Uh, Haji. <laughs> Perdón. Alguna vez me confundo. Se pero se vinieron caminando desde Honduras hasta acá o se vinieron en autobús a través de México en autobús. En autobús. En el bus. Yeah. And then they walked. Okay. Okay. Where did they come across that down here where? Se cruzaron por acá nada más caminando así de que no los paró nadie, nadie los vio. Nobody saw them. They just walked across. No, I'm saying, where did they come across that kilometer uh, to walk down that way and look? Queremos saber por dónde caminaron. Queremos ver por dónde cruzaron. Down this road? Por, por acá, abajo, así. Hasta el final. And uh, how did they walk? Was there no river there? No había río. Sí, cruzaron el río. Ah, okay. Es que no los veo mojados ni nada. So through the water? They said yes. Oh. But I don't see them wet or anything. So yeah. That's why I was asking. Yeah. So they just crossed the water. That's what they said. Acaban de cruzar, pero no están mojados. No, o sea, no, no estoy tratando de ser. Why do they look dry? Si <laughs> dicen que cruzan por el agua, no estarían mojados. So, este, pagamos para que nos pasaran en un tipo de. En un barquillo. Uh -huh. Ah, okay. Sí, sí, me imaginé. O sea, está bien, no se preocupen. Nada más estoy preguntando. So what are they no. planning on doing the rest of the day then? Sí, qué planea, uh, qué planean hacer el resto del día. Nada más seguir caminando, seguir sí, sí, caminando. tratando de entrar. They're going to try to keep going and keep walking. And well, so they did pay someone to uh, yeah, a vehicle cross them in a little raft. Isn't it? Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. right. Another great report from Joe Biggs and the crew down there in South Texas. Now, we've spent a lot of time down at the border over the past, I guess, two or three years, at least since I've been here documenting various things that have been going on down there. And I did a wrap-up report last week, so I'm not going to go crazy into it. But just so people know the situation down there, the area that they were in, 
I guess it's some type of restricted area, even though when we went into it, there is no clearly visible sign telling you that you're in some type of uh, government preserve, wildlife preserve. And uh, there's actually footage of Biggs coming in encounter with the uh, Border Patrol agents, or should I say the uh, state police down there, where they're you know tailing them out. They're saying, hey, you guys can't be here, this and that. Uh, did similar things to us. And it, just somewhat of the absurdity of it. Because looking back, I would say, at least me personally, I feel like I was too hard on the Border Patrol when we did our uh, assignments uh, a couple of years ago. Now, while they do do things that I'm not a fan of, like the inland uh, checkpoint, well, it's an uh, hour or so away from the border where they stop you and ask you, you know, if you're an American citizen, I don't like that. But by and large, a lot of things that I used to blame them for, I now understand are a bit out of their control. They have many things that they would like to do, but they can't implement them because the laws on the books don't allow them to be as effective as they'd like to be. For example, when I went down there two weeks ago, I, I met with the agents and we were having a conversation. And, and of course they were you know, somewhat suspicious of people out there. So they stopped, they asked, hey, what are you guys doing? I said, well, we're just reporters came out from Austin. We're trying to document people crossing the border. And they said, okay, well, be safe, you know, <laughs> because they want people to understand what's going on out there. Meanwhile, the wildlife preserve guys, most of them were very nice that we talked to, but they were more inquisitive of to our activities. And they're like, what are you guys doing out here? And we'd say the same thing, you know, Austin reporters were trying to document. And then they're like, we don't know if you can be out here. And I'm like, well, Sir, we're not, you know, poaching wildlife. We're not taking anything home with us. We just have cameras out here trying to document. And the crazy thing about that, while the uh, wildlife guys were talking to us, like two, uh, two groups of guys came up to us on boats, the wildlife guys, we're having a conversation with them. They, they want to know, you know, the who, what, where, when, and why. While they're speaking to us, a boat comes from Mexico, <laughs> crosses the Rio Grande, and drops people off. I'm like, hey, you guys might want to uh, go check that out. It's, oh yeah, <laughs> and they jump in their boats and they speed off after it. I'm like, this kind of the, the priorities there aren't exactly what they should be in my personal opinion. And like I said, um, when you talk to various people, we've talked to the ICE agents, the Border Patrol agents, uh, you know, people in the local, uh, the local government establishment. And they're telling us basically at some point people get taken to the McCallum bus station where they're given vouchers to travel about the country. And as I always try to stress, because I, I run into some people sometime, I actually did an interview with a young lady, I'm not gonna say what her name was, uh, but she was like, InfoWars is anti-immigrant. And I was trying to explain to her that I have no issue with legal immigration. I don't think anybody else in this building has an issue with legal immigration. The reason why we're against illegal immigration, the reason why I support a border, not a border wall, but a border, is because if you talk to the, all the people I just mentioned right there, they'll be the first person to tell you it's not just the nice women and children that was, we've seen some of the videos uh, here recently of people crossing over and I definitely recognize there are men, women and children, uh, women and children coming over who are coming from El Salvador. They just wanna get away from the poverty or the gangs or whatever else that's going on there. But you also have criminals who are taking advantage of that system. The Border Patrol uh, Vice President I talked to last week, he told us, yeah, we bring in you know, you know big truckloads uh, of dope coming over the border. Yeah, we catch uh, criminals and terrorists trying to cross the border and the thing about it is people need to understand the when you cross the border, you're pretty much on the honor system. So if you're some elusive international terrorist, you're not going to use your real name. You're going to say your name is Bob Jones or something. Well, Bob Jones, you don't have a criminal record. Come on. <laughs> and these are things people need to understand. You need a, a system to verify who people are. But I, I spent enough time on that. I just want people to understand that it's not, you know, bigotry or whatever else. And it's not just people coming from Central or South America. The Border Patrol guys tell us people are coming from China and Pakistan and Yemen. And if I lived in Pakistan or Yemen or Afghanistan and I had to worry about a U.S. airstrike blowing up my church or my hospital, I'd probably want to leave too. So I can't fault people for that. I just wish there is a way for them, a more transparent way, a more speedy way for them to go through the legal and lawful process instead of uh, perpetrating with these uh, catch and release programs. Because uh, the people we talk to, they tell us that if people come from Mexico, they basically just send them back across the border. They come from further away, El Salvador, someplace like that. They give them a bus ticket in a, uh, a very long away court date. So just let's say for the sake of argument, if you come, you know, a two, two month walk from El Salvador, you get to the United States of America and you want to go to someplace like Washington State. I want a, a bus ticket to Washington State. You really think they're going to come all the way back down to, to South Texas just to get deported and sent back to where they came from? Absolutely not. And once again, families, uh, good people want to come here. I understand that. But I think there should be a more transparent way for them to follow and for them to actually follow that way. But I've spent enough time on that.
Let's talk about some other news that are going that's going on right now. And it's been a while since I've talked about a police brutality story. And one of the reasons is because it, there's so many of them. It's kind of like gun stories. We're like, we want to do more gun stories. Like, there's so many. I can't cover them all. But uh, this one in particular, talking about police brutality, is a rather graphic video. And this shows a Baton Rouge police officer shooting a man dead for the heinous crime of selling uh, CDs out of his trunk. Just like you guys recall the gentleman up in New York who was selling, uh, was it cigarettes? They choked him to death and then they said, basically he, he died because he was overweight, which is complete bull. He died because you choked him out with your arm. That's why the guy died. But any excuse to get away with their crimes. And um, we, you, I'm sure you can see uncensored versions of this. And, you know, we have a, a cable audience now, so we can't show all the gritty stuff about it. But basically uh, the officers have the guy down. They say, oh, he's resisting arrest. Resisting arrest in and of itself is not a capital offense. So let's get that straight from the bat. Uh, they have the guy down. The officer pulls out his gun and shoots the guy point blank in the head with the gun while both his arms are restrained. I think that does constitute, a, I'm not going to say at very least, that's a murder as far as I'm concerned. But uh, the people of Louisiana are uh, getting up in arms about this, getting up and uh, having protests about this. And these are things that when I see people protest, I'm like, well, this is a good protest. Now, understand when I say protest, that is not a riot. That is not assault. That's just protest to draw attention to the issue. Let's get that very clear and uh, hopefully some people will be charged in this because I, there's really no excuse for that. Uh, why do these guys, it seems like the only reason some of these officers have pepper spray or other agents is to, you know, uh, spray uh, peaceful protesters at, you know, colleges in California. They'll just come and spray them. We're like, you have the guy down. If he's being an issue, pepper spray him. Maybe even tase him. Uh, I wouldn't say so much in that situation, but uh, pulling a gun out and shooting the guy point blank in the head, that is not good for anybody. So let's talk about something else that's not good for the American people. And those are the actions of Mrs. Clinton. Now, I brought this up the other day. When uh, Mrs. Clinton, she comes out and she's just the apple of the American public. She's, uh, you know, the chosen one. And now anything that she says and does is pretty much gospel. Uh, nobody wants to call her on it. Even uh, places like CBS, they did the uh, profile on her many years ago when she was running against Obama. Uh, that famous clip of Cheryl Atkinson when they were overseas, I believe it was Cheryl Atkinson, how she documented how Mrs. Clinton never got shot at by the snipers. Now they don't even want to talk about that anymore. And now it's to the point when they talk about her emails, they're not going to file any charges against her, and we'll talk more about that. But the issue is you have guys like Edward Snowden, Julian Assange, Bradley Manning, and a couple of those guys we're going to talk about here have to deal with the fact that they put out information in their exile, they're in prison, they're wanted men, Meanwhile, Mrs. Clinton is running for president of the United States of America. And this is what Snowden had to say when he found out uh, how uh, the FBI director was not pursuing charges against Mrs. Clinton. He put out this tweet. He said, break classification rules for the public's benefit. You could be exiled, but you do it for personal benefit and you could be president of the United States of America. How very true. What a heinous double standard that people like uh, our whistleblowers have to go through Meanwhile, Mrs. Clinton, uh, she's when she talks about wiping the drives, which she did, she wiped them clean and then tried to send them to the FBI where she thought they were clean and then sent them over to the FBI. She's like, you mean uh, wipe them with a the cloth? Like, no, Hillary. We're also not talking about Turkey, the Thanksgiving food. when We talk about the country, Turkey. But she knows all that. And she knows like her viewers are just going to eat it up and they're going to laugh. And oh, Hillary's so funny. Meanwhile, the main issues never get addressed. And as I was talking about Bradley Manning or Chelsea Manning, I guess as he prefers to be called now, uh, there's a situation with Chelsea, not so much related to Hillary, but sources are saying that he can or attempted to commit suicide. Now, once again, the guy is in there for some very, I think, trumped up charges. Yes, he did violate people's safety and various things when uh, he sent out that information. But meanwhile, I, I, I personally view him more as a whistleblower than a criminal. But uh, regardless, uh, Chelsea Manning was taken to a hospital during the early morning hours of July 5th before returning to the barracks as spokesman said that officials continue to monitor the inmate's condition. Manning, 28, is serving a 35-year prison sentence for his role in leaking government documents to WikiLeaks. But compare and contrast that with Mrs. Clinton, who put uh, many good people's names at risk when she did her activities, but she's walking around free and easy, and even the FBI said she did potentially expose government secrets to hackers, but, you know, they say she's the chosen one and uh, blow her out like she's some... <laughs> I, I don't know what the hell those people are doing anymore. And uh, as we're talking about James Comey, I want you guys to remember this. It was back in 2003 that investment banker Frank 
Quattrone was indicted on charges of obstruction of justice by then U.S. attorney from the Southern District of New York, James Comey, for one email he sent to employees. Comey charged Quattrone for a one sentence email in which he advised colleagues in late 2000 to destroy documents while regulators were investigating Wall Street investment banks for the way they shared their lucrative initial public offering. So you do that, uh, you get indicted by Mrs. Clinton, and they say, we have no reasonable attorney would prosecute this woman. I'm like, well, it seemed like you were a reasonable attorney uh, back in 2003, but I guess all that changed when you moved up the ladder there. Moving quickly now, talk about ISIS. And we all know that ISIS has gotten uh, armaments from various governments around the world, but now they're saying that ISIS actually has factories in Fallujah that is manufacturing rockets and other type of ammo on uh, almost a industrial scale. And this is recording according to the conflict armament research. They said effective organization and strict division of labor has allowed Islamic State forces to manufacture improvised weapons on a quasi-industrial scale. And they document things I just referenced there, the, the rockets, bombs, and other things. And quickly uh, to wrap up talking about ISIS, talk about uh, Fallujah and the whole things going on there. Tony Blair said he expresses more sorrow, regret, and apology than you can ever believe when it talks about uh, his decisions concerning uh, Iraq back in 2003. The former prime minister called a press conference to respond to a report stating with an emotional statement that he expected accepted full responsibility without exception or excuse. So that's just one of the things going on in the world right now. Stay tuned after this break to the InfoWars Nightly News for more special reports. Although there is evidence of potential violations of the statutes regarding the handling of classified information, our judgment is that no reasonable prosecutor would bring such a case. Zero Hedge has stated, what is shocking is that the FBI director was clearly ignoring the U.S. code itself, where in section 793, subsection F, gathering, transmitting, or losing defense information, it makes it quite clear that intent is not a key consideration. In a case like this, when deciding to press charges, the U.S. code goes as follows. Whoever being entrusted with or having lawful possession or control of any document, writing, code book, signal book, sketch, photograph, photographic negative, blueprint, plan, map, model, instrument, appliance, note, or information relating to the national defense, one, through gross negligence, permits the same to be removed from its proper place of custody or delivered to anyone in violation of his or her trust, or to be lost, stolen, abstracted, or destroyed, or two, having knowledge that the same has been illegally removed from its proper place of custody or delivered to anyone in violation of its trust, or lost, or stolen, abstracted, or destroyed, and fails to make prompt report of such loss, theft, abstraction, or destruction to his or her superior officer, shall be fined under this title, or imprisoned, not more than 10 years, or both. Then Comey said this. In looking back at our investigations into the mishandling or removal of classified information, we cannot find a case that would support bringing criminal charges on these facts. This is a bold-faced lie, a plea of bureaucratic incompetence, a tactic utilized by the Obama administration and the Bush administration on a regular basis. All the FBI had to do was check their own records, as I'm sure they did. Almost exactly a year ago, Brian H. Nishimura pleaded guilty to unauthorized removal and retention of classified materials without malicious intent. Precisely what Hillary Clinton was charged with. U.S. Magistrate Judge Kendall J. Newman immediately sentenced Nishimura to two years of probation, a $7,500 fine, a forfeiture of personal media containing classified materials. Nishimura was further ordered to surrender any currently held security clearance and to never again seek such a clearance. According to court documents, Nishimura was a naval reservist deployed in Afghanistan in 2007 and 2008. In his role as a regional engineer for the U.S military in Afghanistan, Nishimura had access to classified briefings and digital records that could only be retained and viewed on authorized government computers. Nishimura, however, caused the materials to be downloaded and stored on his personal unclassified electronic devices and storage media. He carried such classified materials on his unauthorized media 
when he traveled off base in Afghanistan and ultimately carried those materials back to the United States at the end of his deployment. In the United States, Nishimura continued to maintain the information on unclassified systems in unauthorized locations and copied the materials onto at least one additional unauthorized and unclassified system. Nishimura's actions came to light in early 2012 when he admitted to naval personnel that he had handled classified materials inappropriately. Nishimura later admitted that following his statement to naval personnel, he destroyed a large quantity of classified materials he had maintained in his home. Despite that, when the Federal Bureau of Investigation searched Nishimura's home in May of 2012, agents recovered numerous classified materials in digital and hard copy forms. The investigation did not reveal evidence that Nishimura intended to distribute classified information to unauthorized personnel. And while the FBI claims Mr. Nishimura doesn't exist, the Obama administration has prosecuted more government officials for leaking classified information than all the past administrations combined. The Daily Caller reports the Justice Department swiftly prosecuted six federal government officials between 2009 and 2012 under the Espionage Act. By 2014, nine people were prosecuted under the spy law. The case that went to court was Tom Drake's case. Uh, and the, that's, they took him to court because he was still working for NSA at the time. This was in 2007 when they raided us initially, and then they read Tom Drake about three months later. So they took d information that he had at his house that was marked unclassified, uh, uh, and they changed it. They drew a line through that and then stamped it classified, secret or top secret, then charged him with having classified material. That's like uh, retroactively classifying something so you can charge somebody with having classified material. That's framing him, okay? I also was a material witness and whistleblower for two 9-11 congressional investigations. But all of my material evidence, all of the, the depositions, the, the, uh, the, the oral testimony, all of it was censored and suppressed. In fact, as I found out later, um, the only record that exists that anybody can find to date, and we're talking 13, over 13 uh, years later, is that I was interviewed. Clearly, the leadership of the FBI has been severely compromised. Comey even appears to be making a plea for help as he states all of the classified material that was discovered in Hillary's possession, with a statement clearing Hillary at the end to save his own skin. He seemed to be uh, building a case for that, and he laid out what I thought were the elements of the statute under the gross negligence aspect of it. So I was, I was very surprised at the end when he said that there was a recommendation of no problem. Prosecution. I mean, the facts are the facts, and in this case, I, I think it's there's just a lot of things that are very unusual about this, and I, and I think it might have been better just to refer it and let them make the decision because it's such a close call. The Hill wrote, Comey is a Republican who served in the Justice Department under President George W. Bush and is perhaps best known for his time as acting attorney general when he refused to certify parts of the National Security Agency's domestic surveillance program. That isn't the same James Comey that just blatantly lied to America. John Bound for Infowars.com. So if you're just now viewing this, we just got out of federal custody, detention, whatever you want to call it. We've been there for two hours. Uh, we actually contacted the local state police and they took us back to the border to go pick up our camera equipment from earlier that we had left on a couple trees to film illegals coming in over the Rio Grande River and there's zero signs up that says no trespassing anything like that to that nature there's just one that says state land that's it there's no signs and we ride down there with a friggin state police officer and then, then we're met by border patrol and both of them tell us we're fine to be there and we're standing in front of one of our cameras. We show them where we set it up. We're talking for a while. And the, the Border Patrol guy is like, cool, man. Ride around. If you need anything, let me know. Call us back if you need us. So we're like, all right, we're going to drive back down this way. Go check on our other camera really quick and see what's going on. And Zimmerman and I get out of the vehicle. And we start doing a stand-up report. Talking about what we're doing out here. What's going on. I'm on Periscope Live right now. The InfoWars one. And uh, as you can see, we hello, hello. Hi. How'd you guys enjoy that encounter? Detained by feds. Fucking you know, sucks. It's always
saying and they're filming and we're getting maybe go have some dinner i don't know hang out for a minute come back later when the sun starts to go down like we did last night and before we know it two uh state wildlife fish refugee people or whatever pull up detain us and then we had to sit up and wait on another federal agent to come in who is a federal state and wildlife uh officer they took my two firearms my two springfield 1911s they took zimmerman's gun springfield xd a springfield xd that he had holstered he has his uh, concealed carry permit and open carry all that on him i left mine in the car and uh so we're being questioned for being out there and our whole thing is like hey man the police just escorted us out here and literally they sent us down there and then left and screwed us over and now the federal agents detained us for we've been standing out in the freaking sun for the last two hours being questioned about stuff do what so hot, yeah. so hot. oh it's like 100 degrees outside and like everybody's on the verge of about ready to throw up because we have no water luckily towards the end at the end of the ordeal they finally gave us some water and then we had to pay them right there on our cell phones the $690 altogether for us uh and then he gave us our guns back but I mean you know we had we had questions like all right if we pay this does that mean that we're saying we're guilty for something is this going to affect us down the road not even a $230 fine for Hillary the globalists have controlled the mainstream media for a long time, but now they're expanding, making the weaponization even more vicious and deceptive. All the major networks are state-run. We are partnering this year with the NFL. The NFL has become a political weapon against the Second Amendment and pushes Obamacare. MSNBC tells us that our children belong to the state. We have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. It is more important than ever to realize that we are not the alternative media. We are the true media. The establishment dinosaur press is dying. We are in an information war and we are losing that war. Join us at InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. And I want to catch up on what's going on politically with the Veep Stakes. Veep Stakes, of course, we've had uh, Newt Gingrich speaking with Donald Trump today. We had Joni Ernst and Governor Pence meet with him over the weekend. And today we had Joni Ernst say that she has a lot more to do in the Senate. And quite frankly, I think that's good news, as long as she can't do what she wants to do. Because as I tweeted out over the weekend, as Donald Trump was talking about uh, meeting with her, I tweeted out something she put out a year ago. Senator Joni Ernst, who was a brand new senator at the time, said, I am pleased that TPA is one step closer to implementation. TPA, of course, is the Trade Promotion Authority. And understand, it's not simply about the TPP or the TTIP, the Transatlantic, the Trans-Pacific, quote-unquote, partnerships. They're really treaties, folks. And I cannot believe that a senator doesn't know that these are treaties, doesn't know and doesn't care that there is a process for ratifying treaties in the Constitution. But, of course, the majority of senators, virtually all of them, and the vast majority of the House, the majority of Republicans in both houses, voted to ignore the constitutional process that they are bound to follow and said, we're not going to follow that. We're not going to have two-thirds of the senators vote on these trade treaties. Instead, what we're going to do is negotiate them in secret with corporate lawyers, and then we're going to put it up to a majority vote in both houses. We're not going to allow any amendments. We're not going to allow any debates. We are not going to allow any uh, uh, filibusters. It's going to come to a vote in uh, 20 hours. Uh, so you can't change what we do. You can't talk about it. You can't delay it. We're just going to run this thing through, and we're going to let the president then sign it. Okay, that's the process that she was pleased was one step closer to implementation. What a lot of people call Obama trade. I just call it flat out treason. Because if you openly say we're going to just ignore the Constitution on the process of treaty ratification, what else are you going to ignore it on? Well, quite frankly, everything, right? Just like they do it. Uh, day to day on the Bill of Rights. Now, she met with Donald Trump over the weekend, and then she comes back and she said, well, I made it very clear to him that I've got a lot more to do in the Senate. I'm focused on Iowa, blah, 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 okay? Uh, that's kind of like saying, you can't fire me, I quit. Now, hopefully, when they got together, Donald Trump realized 
that Joni Ernst was diametrically opposed to what he's basing his campaign on. And that is uh, she wants to have the TPP, the trade partnership. When she talked to uh, the Iowa farmer today back in March of this year, they said, what are the top issues for you right now? She talked about four of them. Uh, one of them was the Trans-Pacific Partnership. She said, it's a trade agreement. It's being discussed. I do think we'll get a chance to vote on it. I tend to be supportive of that bill. Well, Donald Trump has said uh, for the last 30 some odd years, he doesn't like NAFTA, he doesn't like the trade deals we're getting, and this is getting far, far worse with this. This is not even a, a trade deal. This is a loss of sovereignty, the management of our economy by an offshore cartel that is unaccountable to any nation state, okay? There's no democratic process involved in this. Senator Sessions, who's been the close advisor to Donald Trump, has explained this to him since last August. Joni Ernst is thoroughly in the tank for that. It's one of her top four priorities, she said, just back in March. Then she talked about something else that Donald Trump hasn't talked too much about, but certainly I don't like. And because she sees herself as the face of big agra, uh, she wants to push through uh, a GMO bill, the Dark Act, as we call it, which will basically shut down any state legislatures from saying we want to have our food labeled to know if it's got GMO in it. Exactly what you would expect from somebody coming from Iowa, where, which is a big corn-producing state, which is where so much of the GMO products is coming from. They don't want you to know what you're eating. They don't want this label there. They're ashamed of it. They're embarrassed by it. They want to lie to you, just as Hillary Clinton does. And so it's a good thing, I think, that um, uh, there's been a uh, not a meeting of the minds. Uh, hopefully, uh, we're going to have the same type of thing uh, happening with some of these other candidates. I'm very concerned to see Newt Gingrich uh, cozying up so much to uh, Donald Trump because Newt Gingrich is a thorough globalist. Also in uh, news, we see that Congress is going to summon the FBI director to explain why there's not going to be any charges brought before Clinton. Okay? And understand this. When we talked to Lionel yesterday, Leanne McAdoo and I interviewed him on the nightly news. And he made a very good point as a former prosecutor. We said, uh, oh, you know, he said um, no reasonable prosecutor would bring charges. Uh, well, here's a reasonable prosecutor, Lionel, because he actually believes in the rule of law, even though he didn't want to see Hillary Clinton go to jail, even though he is supportive of some of the liberal issues, he has criticized SCOTUS and criticized this decision. He said, look, I used to be a prosecutor. This is like a police chief holding a press conference and saying, uh, district attorney, don't you dare indict this person. That's not the job of the police chief. He's supposed to be an investigator. And I want to finish up uh, with what I was about to say about uh, Hillary Clinton and FBI Director Comey. He has been... Uh, told that uh, the Congress would like to talk to him tomorrow. They'd like to have a sit down and say, please explain to us the, not only the double talk, but the double think behind saying that Hillary Clinton committed all these felonies, okay? 110 emails were classified, he admits, that were sent and received as classified. And then, of course, there were thousands more they say were classified later. And we've talked about that. How, if she has a conversation with another head of state, another uh, State Department official in another country. Those are born classified. Now, she can start sending out emails about that right away before somebody in the State Department takes a look at the content and says, wait a minute, uh, that should be secret, top secret, uh, above top secret. And that's the prevarication that she was allowed to get away with. But at the very least, he said, look, there's 110 of these things, okay? And when I heard this, I told my wife, I said, I can't believe it. He's going to indict her. But then he lays out the criminal charges and says, never mind, but don't you try this at home because we'll send you to jail. And we talked a little bit about some of the really egregious prosecutions that have happened with this. But they said today that they want FBI Director James Comey to go before Congress tomorrow to explain his decision that he's not recommending criminal charges. And again, as Lionel pointed out yesterday, a former prosecutor... Why would the investigator tell the prosecutors, the judges, what to do? And he pointed out, he says, look, he's giving political cover to Loretta Lynch. He's saying nobody in their right mind would do it, so of course Loretta Lynch won't do it. They're covering for each other, folks. It's just disgusting to see this. And one of the things that was interesting was even Paul Ryan got in on this and said that Mrs. Clinton should be barred from receiving classified information. 
Now, all of you who are shaking your heads in derision and poo-pooing this on the left, let me just remind you, when this happened to uh, George, um, I'm sorry, to uh, Deutsch, John Deutsch, okay, he was the CIA director under Bill Clinton, and this was uh, like 20 years ago, right? So 1995 to 96. When he left in 96, they found that he had taken documents home to his residence, to his office. He had them on a computer that was not secure, and they came after him very hard. And one of the things that they did was they suspended his clearance. Washington Post reported this back in August of 1999, and he didn't have a problem with it. Deutsch said at the time, he said, while serving as director of central intelligence, I erred in using CIA-issued computers that were not configured for classified work to compose classified documents and memoranda. He said, while it was absolutely necessary for me to work at home and while on travel, in hindsight, it's clear that I should have insisted that I be provided the means of accomplishing this work in a manner fully consistent with security rules. This is Bill Clinton's CIA director who he subsequently had to pardon to keep the guy from going to jail. So clearly they know this. And so it's not out of line at all for Paul Ryan and others to say Hillary Clinton should be barred from handling classified information because she's extremely careless with it. I would say grossly negligent because that's basically the two of those things are indistinguishable from each other. Okay, that's a distinction without a difference to say that she's grossly negligent or extremely careless. And understand that uh, when the inspector general was looking at Deutsch and investigating him, he said uh, he criticized CIA officials because he said they didn't submit the reports on a timely basis. He said there's reasonable basis to believe that Deutsch's mishandling of classified information violated the standards prescribed and that it had the result of delaying a prompt and thorough investigation. Delayed? He was charged within 10 days. They didn't go in and say to his lawyers, would you please uh, review his personal effects and tell us which ones we're going to be allowed to see and which ones we're not going to be allowed to see as they did with Hillary Clinton? Ladies and gentlemen, the fix is in. Hillary Clinton, the establishment puppet candidate for president, has been cleared of all charges by the FBI. This just days after Bill Clinton met secretly with Attorney General Loretta Lynch on a private plane. Look, this woman is a criminal. She destroyed subpoenaed evidence. I mean, this has already been established and doing so is a felony crime. The FBI knows it, the media knows it, and the public knows it. So it's not a matter of if Hillary Clinton is guilty, it's a matter of why she isn't being tried and convicted. This investigation began as a referral from the intelligence community inspector general in connection with Secretary Clinton's use of a personal email server during her time as Secretary of State. The referral focused on whether classified information was transmitted on that personal system. Our investigation looked at whether there is evidence that classified information was improperly stored or transmitted on that personal system in violation of a federal statute that makes it a felony to mishandle classified information either intentionally or in a grossly negligent way. I did not email any um, classified material to anyone on my email. There is no classified material. From the group of 30,000 emails returned to the State Department in 2014, 110 emails in 52 email chains have been determined by the owning agency to contain classified information at the time they were sent or received. The facts are pretty clear. I did not send nor receive anything that was classified at the time. Eight of those chains contained information that was top secret at the time they were sent well, first let me say that I am confident that I never sent nor received any information that was classified at the time it was sent and received. 36 of those chains contained secret information at the time, and eight contained confidential information at the time. I never sent or received any classified material. With respect to the thousands of emails we found that were not among those produced to the State Department, agencies have concluded that three of those were classified at the time they were sent or received, one at the secret level, 
and two at the confidential level. Uh, and most importantly, I never sent um, classified uh, material on my email and I never received any uh, that was marked classified. There is evidence that they were extremely careless. So I'm certainly well aware uh, of the uh, classification uh, requirements and uh, did not uh, send classified material. Seven email chains concern matters that were classified at the top secret special access program at the time they were sent and received. When I got to work as Secretary of State, I opted for convenience to use my personal, personal email, email account. account. Any reasonable person in Secretary Clinton's position or in the position of those with whom she was corresponding about those matters should have known that an unclassified system was no place for that conversation. They are retroactively classifying it. In addition to this highly sensitive information, we also found information that was properly classified as secret by the U.S. intelligence community at the time it was discussed on email. That is excluding any later up-classified emails. It had numerous safeguards. Uh, it was on property guarded by the Secret Service. None of these emails should have been on any kind of unclassified system. But their presence is especially concerning because all of these emails were housed on unclassified personal servers, not even supported by full-time security staff, like those found at agencies and departments of the United States government, or even with a commercial email service like Gmail. I did not send classified material, and I did not receive any material that was marked or designated classified, which is the way you know whether something is. But even if information is not marked classified in an email, participants who know or should know that the subject matter is classified are still obligated to protect it. The use of that server, uh, which started uh, with my husband, uh, certainly uh, proved to be uh, effective and uh, secure. We do assess that hostile actors gained access to the private commercial email accounts of people with whom Secretary Clinton was in regular contact from her personal account. It was reported on Infowars.com that your email server was hacked and you knowingly continued to use your email server. Can you comment on that? Yeah, it's totally untrue. She also used her personal email extensively while outside the United States, including sending and receiving work-related emails in the territory of sophisticated adversaries. There were no... I'm Margaret Howell in downtown Austin reporting for Infowars.com. I'm here in the streets trying to get everyday opinions related to the FBI's decision not to charge Hillary Clinton with that crime related to those scandalous emails. Tell me what you think about Hillary Clinton. Um, as a human or a politician? They decided yesterday that charges are not going to be brought against her, nothing to see here, no wrongdoing. Um, that's hypocritical. I don't trust her as far as I could throw her. How far could you throw her? Not very far. When you look at what Donald Trump's been doing nonstop, he's been hurting people on purpose. And if she made a mistake, it wasn't on purpose. You think Donald Trump's been hurting people on purpose? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I like her a lot. You do? Oh, yeah. I'm with her. Can you say that to my camera? I'm with her. I mean, honestly, the best part of you asking me these questions is I'm a communist. Oh. Yes. Do I like Hillary? Well, you know, Hillary's not a communist, so I don't see your correlation. So you think Hillary Clinton sucks? Yeah. Why? And she's a communist. In my I, had, I had another lady up here just a second ago who was a communist, and she said she didn't like Hillary because she wasn't a communist. Yeah. Well, her opinion. Is there anything that she could do to make you not vote for her? Uh, murder somebody on Fifth Street? Uh, absolutely, completely new to me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no opinion over Hillary Clinton whatsoever? Uh, I prefer her to Trump. Can I go for that? You said the system was rigged. Why? Um, because if you have enough money, you can get away with about anything you want to. You think she's too big to go to jail? Uh, I do. I think she has enough bodies buried that they'll never be able to get her. So it's good enough that she's a girl, basically? Woman, yes it is. She's too big to go to jail. She has... She knows too many people that can get her out of something. And Are you a Trump supporter? Um, yeah, I, I, I don't believe in some of the stuff he does, but I agree with him on some things. I'm Hispanic, and I don't think it's wrong for him to say illegals should be sent back. Oh, Hillary Clinton absolutely, positively is a liar. Are you 
ago. What do you think about Hillary Clinton's email scandal? Did you follow that? Yes. I think she's a dirty scumbag. Yeah, I don't really know much about it. All I know is it's bad. Is she bad? You know, she doesn't mean to be bad, but the decisions she does and the things she does probably isn't good. Uh, <laughs> you got to tell me who you're voting for. For Heath Ledger's rotting ball sack. Um, and... Yeah. Do you think that Heath Ledger's rotting ball sack would be better at the presidency than Hillary Clinton? Heath Ledger's rotting ball sack would be better at the presidency than Hillary Clinton. Well, that's it for our show tonight. We do encourage you to go to prisonplanet.tv and get yourself a free trial. You can see the nightly news, the special reports, the rants, all right there at prisonplanet.tv. Well, I'm Jakari Jackson from the InfoWars Command Center, and we'll see you again tomorrow night. Unfortunately, you've grown up hearing voices that incessantly warn of government as nothing more than some separate sinister entity that's at the root of all our problems. It's time to stop submitting to this tyranny. It's time to realize that we're being enslaved. Some of these same vo voices also do their best to gum up the works. They'll warn that tyranny is always lurking just around the corner. Tyranny with a capital T. You should reject these voices. Everything that's been done with torture, rendition, the NDAA, the Patriot Acts 1 and 2, from day one was focused on the American people, period. That's it. It's always been about erasing the Bill of Rights and Constitution and rolling out NSA spying publicly, saying it's for Al-Qaeda, rolling out torture, saying it's for Al-Qaeda, but it's really for the general public, rolling out total control and the end of any underground free market systems in the name of fighting Al-Qaeda, but really shutting down any type of free commerce. This is all about converting us from a free society to a tyranny with a capital T.